We believe in North Carolina basketball. <laughs> Man, it's another good one. It's another good day to be a Tar Heel. How we feeling? Graham Bun in the building, uh, former D1 basketball player. I uh, got my brother, Carolina alum, all around. Very insightful in my sounding board for all things Tar Heels. Zach Talitsky joining the show. Uh, I love doing these reaction shows when I feel the way I feel right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep them coming. Yeah, keep them coming. All right, I'm going to let you lead it off. Like, I, I, where do you want to I'm in such a good mood. Like, I, I should probably pull up and I wrote down like structure of the show and we'll do this and things that we love and do, you know just uh, where are you how you feeling today like uh, how's your day going day's been good day's been good you know it's uh my my headline uh was Houston Purdue Kansas and Tennessee have all lost in the last two days and yeah. Miami and Clemson both lost tonight in the ACC um and so, you know, it was a good night to get a win. It's like, you know, sometimes it's like when you're playing on one of those NCAA tournament days where, when there's just like upsets galore, you, you don't yeah. want to play on those days. So I was thinking, oh, okay, here we go. And, you know, we're, we're seven in the country going on the road, uh, you know, against a rival. It's going to be tough, um, you know, getting everything that's going on around the country. So uh, a lot of craziness, so a yeah. lot of craziness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that UCF Kansas game, I, I like. I cannot believe it. I that that shocked me, and I I've got a lot of friends. I've got a few friends that played at UCF, and I know that place is going to be going crazy. And that's that's in your old, old neighborhood, I think, right? And that it right there in your backyard. Well, yeah, uh, UCF's in in Orlando, so uh, oh, it's in Orlando. FA, F, okay. FAU, yeah, FAU's was was a mile and a half from her house, so that's right. That was right in her backyard. And they're they're quite the team this year as well. Yeah, although they've been uh they've had some upsets. They've been tailing off a little bit lately. Yeah. Mm. Well, Carolina but, but yeah, so, handles so great, business. Great to, yeah, great to handle business when all this mayhem's happening around the country. It just goes to show, you know, you get into conference season and these road mm -hmm. games, they're really hard games to win. And the fact that we, you know, have 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 won all three of these is is uh really a testament to the team. Yeah, well, a few things. One, I like that sweatshirt you got on. Looking good. I've never seen that one. It's fresh. And two, <laughs> yeah, I mean, anytime. What, we, we've we started, I think we've played five out of the last six games on the road, and three of them in conference. We've got road wins. Um, yeah, just setting ourselves up for a wonderful push for, you know, a successful regular conference, regular season. So I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I want to take in the NC State game. NC State just, again, coming off rolling UVA and I will never count UVA out for anything just because they're so well coached and they've had there's such tradition at that program under Tony Bennett. This is a big win for us. I, I don't care what anybody says. Like that's a that was a big win. So my uh, my question for you is is the three point percentage percentage defense over the last three games for these road <laughs> games. I mean Pitt <laughs> and, and NC State when I mean, couldn't throw it in the ocean and. Um, yeah. Particularly his last two, I think I think Clemson was under ten percent. NC State, I think, was like eleven percent tonight or yeah, something. Clemson was shoot? one of eighteen, I believe. Clemson was yeah. one of eighteen, and tonight yeah. it was like two of eighteen or something. Two of nineteen, yeah. Two of nineteen. Okay. So I, you know, I don't know. What do you make of that? Is that is that luck? Are we playing that good of perimeter defense? I mean, well, one also just to add these these shooting percentages are coming on their home floor, so they. <laughs> shoot in this gym they're familiar with this gym it's not like they're going on the road and they're playing uh you know in a in a gym where the depth perception is not something they've seen i don't know what it is and honestly outside of us pulling away in the last few games you know and making sure that we you know we took care of business and we won down the stretch and it it didn't come down to like one possession it's also scary you know, it's like you're not going to get, for the most part, one of 18 from college basketball from three. And we've got it three games in a row where they just couldn't throw it in the ocean. So, you know, you got to say at some point, we must be doing something well. You know, I, I don't know what it is. It's hard to look at the game and say that we're doing anything better than anyone else in the country to warrant those results as far as defensive three-point shooting. And again, I think this is the third game in a row on the road holding the home team under 60 points. Like it's just in an age of offense and in an age of where there's freedom of motion. And then, you know, usually 
things are skewed towards the offense. Holding teams under 60 and definitely on the road in their own arena where they're comfortable with the goals and they've got the momentum of the crowd. At some point, you got to say it's something we're doing. Um, but again, the the to answer your three point question, I don't know. I don't want to jinx it. I hope it stays that way till the end of time and definitely to, until the end of this season. But uh, I've never seen anything like it. Three back to back to back shooting performances from the home team that are just abysmal at best. Yeah, and I'm, I think you have to give us some credit for it. I think you know the fact we're playing you know, uh, four perimeter guys helps versus, you know, some of those two, two big teams where, sure you know, we were, we were, you know, giving up that, especially to a stretch four where I think we can match up a little bit better on the perimeter now with this lineup. Um, so that's got to help. I think we're staying in front better. And so we're not giving, you know, getting that um, drive and dish, you know, with the paint touches that you always talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think we're doing some things right on defense, obviously, but, but still, you know, yeah. it's uh, it's just amazing with low percentages. Yeah, we'd be we'd be you know, I guess the word is homers if we did acknowledge that we're getting some help by some poor shooting performances by some of the home team. And again, like you said, at some point you got to give credit to UNC. Like you know, how many times does it have to happen where it's like, well, they got to be doing something, whether it's running guys off the line, whether they're scouting it, and I don't know everybody's shooting percentages. Maybe they're you know, running to the right guys and they're allowing certain guys to have the looks that they're getting and they're just not knocking them down. I don't know. I think it's a combination of a lot of things, but I'll take it. Like you never want to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm I'm great. You keep on coming with those shooting percentages, especially when we're on the road in hostile environments. Yeah. Yeah. Great. How, uh, how about, um, Harrison Ingram on the on the boards tonight, though. I mean, I think he ended up with 19. Yeah, he had 19. I wanted him because I think he finished with nine points. And again, for anyone listening to this, we're doing this five minutes after the game ended. So, uh, you know, the box score, I have it somewhere, but I haven't dissected it. Uh, I think he missed both free throws at the end for the double double. I think he, he finished did. with nine points. I, I was I was sick for him. I was like, I want you to get the double double. I would have loved to, him to get 20 rebounds, but I think 10 and 19 is just as good as 10 and 20. I mean, 10 and 20 sounds better, but like what a game by that kid, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, especially with, with Baycott sitting so much of the game, you know, who, who's normally the one mm -hmm. carrying us on the boards. And so for him to get 14 <laughs> defensive and five offensive boards, just that, that activity and effort level is, uh, is, is fantastic. So, yeah. I mean, well, that's the second see. game he's done that, you know, it's something to that regard. It was, uh, was it the Clemson yeah, no, game 15, or was it the pit? 15 in the pit game? Yeah. In the pit game. Yeah. So he can get on the boards and I do love how strong he is and he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. Like I love him. Uh, I really hope that he finds his shot and and we can get some of the other aspects of his game clicking for for some of these games that I think are going to be a little bit closer. But to contribute and like you you know you're one of the biggest proponents of finding ways to contribute to the team if if it ain't making shots. And I think that he's it's an easy beacon to look towards when you get 19 rebounds. He is really affecting the game in a lot of ways outside of just scoring points. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I feel like Seth Trimble continues to do that. You like, if you didn't watch us play and you just looked at our box score every game, you think, ah, oh, yeah. you know, he's not, he's not doing all that much, but he had that stretch there in the second half, you know, where, where he's attacking. He just, it just feels like he knows his role and um, he knows he's coming in. He's supposed to score on transition and, and drive and be aggressive and play great defense. And I feel like, you know, it's not the whole game, but there's always some stretch where he like helps us spurt. Yeah. Yeah, and, for uh, sure. And coming off the bench, that's what you want. There was one thing, if we're being selfish, and I'm gonna be greedy here. He is you know, obviously JP Tokoto also had this. They're they're brothers. There was the breakaway where like he had he was coming downhill on the left side, take off two feet. He should put this dude in the rim. I mean, he kind of moved the ball a hundred different ways and tried to get it up there and, you know, missed the shot and didn't get the foul. And I get it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm sitting on my cut, my couch at home, but if I was ever able to jump like that young man can jump, there's no chance that I would not be trying to put that dude in the rim on a breakaway like that. So I'm, I'm hopeful that they'll look back at tape and they're like, Hey man, these are one of the few times where just go get it. Just go tear the rim off the goal because he is athletic enough to do it. Put yeah, the ref agreed. in that position. Yeah, put the ref in the position to call it or not call it. You know what I mean? Like, 
you know, I, I and he's had a lot of success contorting his body and finishing, and he's had some great finishes. But selfishly, I would love to just see him put somebody in the rim. It would have been great. Yes, yes. And uh, love that Elliot Cadet only had one foul tonight. <laughs> that's that's always nice. That's always yeah, nice. So, yeah, you know, I feel like he was in so much of a better rhythm, you know, and 11.6 six assists. Yeah. Um, he had some great assists too, and then he, he had, had a couple hockey ones. assists, a couple hockey assists that won't show up in the in the stat sheet. But like, we are a better team when he gets twenty five minutes a game. Totally, and we I feel like we run more, we get more easy bu buckets in transition. Um, I think we actually won the turnover battle tonight. I don't know if we turned it over in the second half, and I think um, I think they said in the broadcast, NC State was a plus five and a half uh, turnover, um, which is top ten in the country, I think. Mm -hmm. So to beat them, beat them in the turnover battle, I think it's 10 to nine in our favor. Um, and again, I'm not sure that happens yeah. if he, he's not on the floor as much as he is. Um, right. So. Well, um, also, uh, and again, tail of the tape, you know, we, if we, if we do win at 10 to nine, it looks like that's correct. I'm, I'm trying to add it up while you say that five of them came in the first four minutes. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. We turned the ball over, you know, luckily, you know, everybody was kind of hyped up and people, it usually takes till the first, whenever I was in college basketball, not a flex at all, but it, it's just, I used to really, really look forward to the first media timeout. Cause like the first four minutes you're so amped up and you know, the crowd's going crazy and you, you know, you're trying to like settle and calm your nerves after the first time out, people kind of really settle into the game plan and like, uh, the, the excitement of the game starting has faded a little bit. So the first, before the media timeout, we had like four or five turnovers already. So the rest of the game, we did a very good job of protecting the ball. And, and obviously when you look at the box score, you don't know when those turnovers came. They were great because we withstood turning the ball over four or five times in the first seven possessions, and we were down two or three. You know what I mean? Usually you get four or five turnovers, you're down 10. So, uh, you know, again, we were very fortunate to withstand – kind of the first four minutes until we kind of settled in and then they did a great job protecting the ball. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, increased our, our increased depth is hopefully showing up a little bit more this year. I mean, both, you know, Baycott, I mean, I didn't really think that was a flagrant, but, uh, anyway, so he had to sit for most of the yeah. first half and then, um, but you know, they were able to, we were sort of able to hold the fort while he was out. And then in addition to that, Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, if you look at how we've been playing down the stretch in some of these games, you know, I think I think you can chalk some of that up to the fact that we, you know, we're playing the, the bench more minutes and so we're a little fresher. I mean, mm -hmm. last few games we've just we've been able to sort of pull away and execute better mm -hmm. down the stretch. Last year that was the opposite. And so yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know if that's really the cause, but but it certainly seems like it would help. Yeah, one of the things that that I loved, and and I I marked it down somewhere. I don't have my notes because I'm in such a good mood. I was like, I don't care. We're just gonna chop it up and talk about how great the night was. Um, and and uh, apologies. I know both my parents are NC State grads. They're gonna be watching this and like, where do we go wrong? But, um, was I felt like R.J. Davis struggled early and he missed a bunch of shots. When I say a bunch, he missed three or four shots that. 90% of the time, those shots go in. And I thought that the team found ways to score and keep the game close without RJ carrying us. And I loved that because we can't depend on RJ to shoot. I mean, I think his, his three-point percentage ended up being close to 50%. Yeah, he was four of 10. And one of them, he like, I don't know, at the end, he he kind of got a little outside of himself. He knew the game was over and he, he kind of jacked one up that was outside of what normally I think he would take. Um, but, you, you know, we we're going to have games where RJ maybe is, you know, they're really locking in. He's not getting the looks he wants, but we found ways to score and it wasn't necessarily predicated off of anything RJ was doing. And I thought that was huge growth from Cadeau, you know, snaking ball screens and getting Baycott rolling down and uh, doing the, the double pin down. I would love to see, this is going to get a little bit intricate for some people. And, and if I, if I mutilated, I apologize. I would love to see Harrison Ingram be the second on the double pin downs. Uh, right now it's, you know, we've run this set a couple times right out of the tip and right out of timeouts where Ingram's the first look. And then the second trailing off the pin down is Carmack Ryan on the curl to get to a strong hand. Uh, I'm, I'm loving Carmack Ryan more and more every game. But Harrison Ingram's so strong to get him momentum going downhill. I feel like is is 
a good thing for us. And I think it works out a little bit better for us. But again, I, I thought Carmack Ryan played great tonight. Uh, I would like to see him knock down some of the open corner threes. You know, he missed two naked ones tonight. And I think he finished uh, two of three. six from three. Two of six from three. And two, yeah. at least two of those looks were feet set, no one in the same stratosphere, and, you know, didn't knock them down. And again, we didn't need it tonight. But there will be games. I know anyone that listen, the few people that that listen as of right now, they're gonna be like, man, he's he nitpicks on this. Like we didn't, it didn't matter. Like we won. But there will be games where we need that to go in. We need that shot to go down. We need it to be three of six, not two of six. We need it to be four of six, not not two of six. And if they were coming off the bounce, off the dribble, or off the catch and shoot with someone pressing, then I, you know, okay, these are tough looks. But he's getting some naked, wide open looks that you just we kind of need him to shoot better. Yeah, I thought it was coming tonight. I thought we were gonna get a five for six or something. You know, we hit those two in the first half. But uh, and the second one was nice. Uh, was, on the step yeah. in on the on the transition. Yeah, yeah, like the it was confident. I uh, right when it left the sand, I was like, that's good. It just looked good and. You know, again, I'm nitpicking, but when you get down to the dog days of the ACC championship and then the NCAA tournament, we just we need it to be more than 30 percent. And I think I think he's still sub 30 percent from three, which is, you know, the good news is well, there's a lot of room for improvement there. Like if he was shooting 50 percent from three and we were four, no, you know, I'd be like, well, yeah, of course, because he's shooting it well. We're finding ways to win and we're not shooting it great from from our wings. Yeah. Well, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, defense on on DJ Burns. All right, because um, that was one of my keys going into the game. I was I, I was curious if we were going to single him up and 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 try to just have Baycott take him one on one and not let the shooters get going. If we were going to try to yeah. double him or what we were going to do. Yeah, um, I mean, clearly what we did worked, but yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't know if you you. We had talked about it before the game, so I don't know if you were paying much attention or if you had much of a take on it. But uh, I, I like that we switched it up. Yeah, I love giving them different looks. Giving them different looks. Like I, I think when you let a guy get comfortable, especially you know maybe not so much as a big. I, I'm not a big, so uh, you know I've never had to deal with a mid post or on the block double team, and where you're going to get those looks out of it. But I am, you know, someone that played in an offense where we had a lot of sets with ball screens, and it was like okay. Are they going to double the ball screen? Are they going to do drag coverage? Are they going to do drop coverage? Um, and I'll just be honest with you, they never did drop coverage. <laughs> it's a conversation for a different, <laughs> different, different time. But uh, when you let a guy get comfortable and like they know where to go, I, I think that you know mixing up the looks is the easiest thing to just innately say. Well, let's give them different looks. Let's see what works. And you're right. They started the game, and honestly, he was feasting a little bit when it was just single coverage. One of the things that I don't think showed up, and I don't know if you noticed this, I'd love to hear your take on it, uh, will never show up in the box score, and I don't know, hopefully the UNC coaching staff told him to do this. They got started meeting him in transition in or above the free throw line. And so his when he was receiving the ball, he was receiving the ball 15 to 16 feet out instead of first contact being underneath the free throw line. And so for anyone listening to this, when bigs are running down the floor and it's, it's after a made or missed basket, First contact, they always tell Biggs, hey, first contact above the free throw line. Don't allow them to just set up camp and, and no resistance, get the position that they want and that they're comfortable. You know, bump him, nudge him. And I thought Baycott did an amazing job after a few, you know, there's obviously it's 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 hard to find people in transition. But there was a lot of resistance above the free throw line. He didn't just get position that he wanted at any point in time in, in the night. And I think that resistance – kind of wore him down in the second half. He was a little bit more fatigued than he would have been had that resistance not been there. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And, you know, you sort of look at his line at 11 points, uh, zero offensive rebounds, two total boards. Um, and he only had one assist, which maybe is the most important, I think, That's line the item most on important. there. That's right? the you, most important. Yes. I mean, Hubert talked about it going into the game. He talked about what a good passer he is. They talked about it in the on the broadcast. And yeah, look, they didn't shoot well, so he's not gonna have a bunch of assists. But you know, really, the the, the one time, you know, you know, that Cadeau kind of got caught in no man's land, and he he rifled a, a nice pass out top, and they made a three, and that was his one one assist. But 
I sort of worried going into the game, you know, we're going to double him a lot and he's going to get all their perimeter guys going and, and, you know, have five, six assists off of threes. And, and, and that didn't happen. I thought we had good rotations. I thought we changed it up. I thought, you know, guys, you know, were just flying all over the court recovering. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, they would have shot a higher percentage if that weren't true. So um, yeah, I think mixing it up was nice. You know, I've probably been critical at times where, where, it feels like our game plan is is uh, is a little uh, predictable, um, and that wasn't the way tonight. I, I felt like we really uh, really made him think, um, and and change things up, and came from different different angles. And and um, yeah, I think it shows up in the numbers. And I think that was a huge key to the defense for the game. Yeah, agreed. I mean, for anyone that doesn't know, and I would I would know. I just looked it up now. I mean, DJ Burns is second on their team in assist uh and you know the guy who leads them in assists it's like point two and it's you know o'connell the transfer from stanford so uh, that's a very important aspect of their their offense and limiting that and again we got some help with with the poor shooting percentages but at some point whatever carolina's doing and whatever they're coaching or prepping in the scouting report some of that is working, no matter how how you slice it. If a team shoots poorly, but the guy had one assist, uh, we kept that in check. And I, I I agree with you. I think that's the most important you know stat on that line right there is that we held him to one assist. And and the team seems to be buying in and executing, right? You know, I mean, look, it's not always going to work, right? Sometimes you're going to execute and people are just going to make shots and, and yeah, you of may course, lose the game. But you know, I mean, what we did against. Um, Pitt and Clemson and, and NC State, um, you can tell that you know the team understood the game plan. Um, it was well put together. They executed it, you know, and sort of paid off um, because the other teams didn't shoot shoot great either. But but again, I think we're forcing a lot of that because we're taking you know, clearly what what Hubert and the staff are asking them to do, and they just seem they just seem really dialed in, um, yeah. which, is, which is great to see. Yeah, another thing, if anyone didn't see the game, like maybe they're they're checking this out because they, you know, they want to know what happened and they weren't able to watch it. Uh it cut there were several times, and I when I say several, maybe two times when I was watching the game and it cut to Hubert Davis after, you know, a bucket or a dead ball, or they're getting ready to inbounds. And we were up at both times that I saw this happen, we were up eight, maybe, you know. So we're 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 doing well. And he was emphatic in coaching whatever point he was coaching. Um, so he wasn't resting on his laurels. He wasn't over there with his arms crossed. Like he worked throughout the game and it was, it was just really cool to see. Now, again, like maybe he's always done that for the last couple of years, but I, I feel like there's just been a noticeable difference with taking timeouts and getting sets run, you know, use it or lose it timeouts. And, really coaching through the game and it seems to me and, I, and we're winning games so maybe it's just a vic i'm a victim of the moment because we're winning games that he's his impact as a coach is really showing up in the game more so than it has in my opinion in the last few years and some of that you know you never know like uh you know caleb love had a tendency to kind of pull the trigger at, at random times where you're like what's he thinking on that shot like that was a force and maybe, you know, you, you look at the box score and you're like, well, why doesn't Hubert do something about this? Maybe it wasn't always his fault, but it just seems as if this season, Hubert's really put his thumbprint on this team and the identity of how we're executing. And it's really, really cool to see. And it's it's a very positive and I'm very optimistic about down the stretch. Well, we need his impact. You know, we need we need that coaching. And I, I think he's doing a great job. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's uh, and the team. Yeah, the team. Clearly this year, you know, stating the obvious, but 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 the buy-in this year and the execution this year and, and the cohesiveness with the team is 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 great to see. Yeah. And it looks like they're having fun. Now, again, winning cures a lot. And we look like we were having a lot of fun when we were winning all those tournament games. So, you know, I, I get it. Take it with a grain of salt. But it just seems as if the team, like you said, feels comfortable in their roles. They're celebrating each other in those roles and people are succeeding and, you know, really enjoying everyone else's successes outside of their own. And I think that that is 1000% a very large recipe into a successful run in postseason basketball. So I, I'm pumped, man. I'm in a, a great mood. It's a great day to be at Tar Hill. And I was looking forward to coming on here. I didn't have all the numbers and stats that I wanted, but 
you know, it's nice to get on here and, and enjoy a big win and three road wins. Uh, you know, I got to pull up when we play next, but it's just they've put themselves in such a wonderful position moving forward. And hopefully they're not going to, you know, lay down and, oh, we've done enough. But like the, the momentum and the confidence has got to be feeling good in that locker room right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we have Syracuse at home next. Yeah, this weekend. Um, that's right. Yeah, this weekend. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then Louisville. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I didn't see it, but you said Louisville beat Miami tonight in Miami. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, we got Louisville at home. So, hopefully, they're like, okay, cool. This is definitely not a team to sleep on, you know? And, yeah. And obviously, uh, I would imagine Withers is going to want to take that one, you know, it's pretty steadily being a, a Louisville transfer. Um, yeah, 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 I guess we we can't get past Syracuse first. We got to make sure that we we handle business there. Yeah, and and then Clemson lost on the road to Virginia Tech, which you know that's probably not a huge surprise. Um, yeah, they're tough but, in Virginia Tech, and I love the coach at Virginia Tech. He's he, he recruited me at Walford. Uh, great guy. I, I've heard nothing but amazing things um, about him. I'm drawing a blank on his last name. Pretty pretty sure his Mike Young. Mike. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was great. And and shout out to my mom. My mom was – and I'm so glad that I ended up at App State, but my mom wanted me to go to Walford so bad to play for him. She loved she loved my Coach Young. And I, I'm pretty sure he had an in-home visit, but uh, made a, a really big impact on our family. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, – he seems to be a great coach. But uh, where was he before? Was he at uh, – uh, college of Charlotte, no, not no, he was no, he's at Walford before Virginia. Yeah, he was at Walford, yeah, yeah, yeah. He recruited, he was like the head recruiter that like head up my recruitment at, at New Hampton Prep to, to go to Walford. I, I took a visit there, they had you know an in home with mom and dad, and yeah, he was he was great. I just I didn't want to go to Walford, you know, I didn't like my visit, I didn't like the campus, and so I just I just didn't go there. Um, but I should have, and and they were a really good program. But big shout out to Appalachian State where I ended up and it was the best. And I love the Mountaineers and Boone, North Carolina was it was a wonderful experience outside of athletics. But yeah, Mike Young, really good coach. And that and they've got tough some to players. Be, it's tough to beat Boone. Boone's awesome. Tough to beat Boone. Yeah, it come is. on Boone's now. Awesome. Tough to, it's God's country, you know. <laughs> yeah, Chapel Thrill's pretty good too, though. Chapel Thrill and Boone, you know. So we, we hold down North Carolina. All right. Well, we, we did half an hour, and we're going to try to keep these under a half an hour. But uh, it's a great day to be at Tar Heel. Hopefully, uh, we'll be back and, and have a similar show uh, for Syracuse. We're at home. Any keys to the game? Because that will be a different dynamic for us, you know, playing against the zone. I love that we're going to be home. We're not going to be shooting in the Carrier Dome the first time we see this 1-3-1 one, one with the new, new players. I think it's a little bit easier to attack that when you're at home. But it is going to be a different dynamic, and our offense hasn't seen anything like what they run. So, so I, I think Syracuse plays man now. Are they out of that? They don't go. I think, they don't, they don't. I think they're out of it. Don't nice. hold me to it. I got to do my research between now and this weekend. But I was watching them. Uh, I don't know last week or something, and, and they were man, and I and almost fell fell off the couch. So, well, Bayham's not there anymore, so that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, I, I've never seen a Syracuse game where they didn't play the one-three-one or some sort of zone. So that's that's good to hear because the guys have seen man-to-man, -man, so they'll be doing good. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it would be great, you know, to have. Um, I mean, it's great the, the the caliber of the defense that we've been playing on the road, and hope we can keep that up at home. But it'd be nice to see some good flow and 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 put up, you know. 85 90 or something at home again like like we've i feel like these have all been kind of gritty gritty games um and uh you know but on the road you just have to win that way i think yeah just to put it in perspective uh, i if i were to tell you well i mean you you would guess it now the way i preface it but charleston southern scored more points than pittsburgh clemson and nc state against us i would have lost that bet yeah, yeah. I mean, our very first broadcast out of the Kentucky game, we were talking about, you know, where we were in the Kim Palm defensive uh, efficiency rankings, and it wasn't good. Yeah. And, uh, we were talking about there's no way we're going to make a run or do anything unless that improves. Um, and, uh, and since then, I mean, it has been probably the best run of defense I can maybe remember. Yeah. I mean, I have to go way back in my, my Carolina history books uh, yeah. to, 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 find a time where we have that kind of stretch of, of, of defense being played. So, I mean, we've like shot up, I know in the Kim Palm rankings, I think we're one of a couple teams now in sort of the top 15 or something like that of both offense and defense. So 
you know, showing up in the in the numbers, we'll see we'll see uh, if it's a fluke with some of this three point shooting or if it's something that we can maintain. Yep. Sounds good, man. Well, go heels, baby. Go heels. Have a good week. You too, bud. Bye.